Oh. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It's Positive Tuesday today, August 9th, 2022. Ooh, it's election day today. Uh, Spooner Health CEO Mike Schaefer is joining us today, and we'll get some updates if there are any on COVID and maybe some monkey pox. Kind of let the, you know, people are talking about that. Uh, get some results from last week's Spooner Health golf outing. And later in the show, we'll be talking politics, maybe try to do some political analysis, and even <laughs> uh, give some predictions that are sure to go wrong since it's election day today. But first, for Barron County Sheriff Chris Fitzgerald, I'm Ben Dredd, and you are watching Positive Tuesday with Ben and Fitzy, presented by Professional Exteriors and Interiors. With nearly 20 years of experience, this locally owned and operated business has provided quality work in roofing, garages, siding, window installations, kitchen and bathroom remodeling, vinyl and hardwood flooring, and they can even build your house or business from the ground up. Like Fitzy and I, they believe that it's the little things that make a big difference, so give them a call today. Number's right there on the screen, 715-520-2271. Positive Tuesday is also brought to you in part by the Wisconsin Lakes team. It's still a great time to buy or sell a home, and when you do, we recommend our friends from the Wisconsin Lakes team. Anyone can say that they're an agent, but not everyone treats their clients as they would like to be treated, and that's what Aaron and Katie do. Find out more, visit them at lakesteamwi.com. Also supporting the show are our friends at Industrial Safety. We all know that Industrial Safety sells and services practically everything that goes into a fire station and on a firefighter. They also provide kitchen suppression system maintenance, inspection, and installs. For more information about this service and to see a list of all of their available services, visit their website at industrialsafetystore.com. There we go. Hey, we met Aaron. We saw him. He golfed the other day with us all, too. Oh, that's right. With the Spooner Hill. Yeah. You know, it's really weird. So when I just went to go live, it said, do you want to continue your last live stream, which hasn't ended? That's uh, no, I feel like that ended. <laughs> so I'm not really sure what happened there. When was that? Yesterday? Uh, no, it was with it was Thursday with Angie Sapic running in the 73rd district. I think it's ended. I hope it did because holy cow, I don't want people to you know be watching me and listening to my phone call. Anyway, Mike, good morning. Thanks for coming on, man. Thanks for having me again. Yeah. So the last time that you were on, which was just like a month and a half ago. We didn't really get a chance to talk to you, of course, because we were doing the the Jeopardy thing yeah. for our 100th episode. So we wanted to have you back on so we could actually talk to you. And then also, because it's fitting, we just did the Spooner golf outing, Spooner Health uh, a golf tournament outing to fundraiser. So I want to get into that. But first, as always, we always like to start with something positive going on in our lives. Fitzy, we'll start with you. Uh, I got nothing. Nothing I mean, positive in your life at all. Well, there's always positive. No stuff. hockey, I, I hockey. suppose. Yeah, well, my kid played hockey all weekend, but he didn't make the team. But that's okay because we're going to go to Madison and play for the Capitals. So, um, yeah. So that's a big thing. What does that? What yeah. does that mean? Play for the cap? Uh, well, I, they have a, they have an 18 team, so we're going to go play for the Madison Capitals starting in September and play down there, um, play some hockey down there. So uh, that's our plan. So yeah, that's a, it's a big deal for him. Uh, great opportunity for him that he made that team and he was trying out for a team above that and didn't make it but he's young so there's time junior hockey's tough and hockey's a different animal compared to other sports you don't go to college first it's kind of confusing but that's a different show for a different day um but yeah it's uh, it was it was interesting he had good good experience for him the last two weekends trying out for a couple different teams and um no i just relaxed all weekend and no no fairs uh, no, we did a we did a neat little thing at the campground in Chatech, and they had law enforcement day, and they had all the kids lined up with thin blue line flags, and we did a, a parade through their campground with the, for all their campers, and we stopped and played frisbee with the kids, and Aww. so that was really it's called law enforcement day they have down at the campground in Chatech, and so we did that at Chatech River Campground, so yeah, we still did lots of stuff, but yeah, no yeah. big fairs. Oh, that's there's awesome. Food, there's a food truck in the parking lot here yesterday, though, so that's always good. So, <laughs> <laughs> I love food trucks. Yeah, those things are awesome. I agree. I know. They're awesome. They're so, the do they just park outside your, you know, the sheriff's office? Just That's pretty yeah. smart. I mean, go where the barbe- population is. Yeah, it was barbecue on this way. It was hot dogs on Friday. So, yeah. Do the I inmates do the inmates get uh, no, to park? Inmates no, inmates don't get to come no. Well, that's what you get when, you know, you commit crimes. You don't get <laughs> food truck stuff. 
That's right. You don't, <laughs> you don't get food trucks. There's yeah. a new slogan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, how about you? Well, I had a weekend at home this weekend, which hasn't happened much this summer. My uh, daughter, Jordan, has been coaching U14 softball with the Northwest Lightning. And uh, it was kind of nice. It was full circle. I coached her in the program on the U16 team uh, three, four years ago. Um, so she appointed me bookkeeper. So <laughs> I got to travel around with her and keep books on the team. Really enjoyed the summer doing that. It's just gratifying to see my daughter enjoy coaching as much as I did. Uh, but it was really nice to be at home, get some yard work done, do that. Um, two other things going on. My middle son, Tanner, has been living at home since COVID, working in Hayward. He is moving to Madison area this weekend. They're going to miss him a lot, but excited for him to uh, to spread his wings a little and try something different. In fact, he's going to be living right by close to the uh, Bob Suter Ice Arena, where the Capitals oh, play. See, well, and, does he need a roommate? I'm looking for a house. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> he's, he's actually got uh, two other roommates, two college buddies he's getting together mm. with. And I guess the the most exciting thing, we're one month and one day away from my oldest, Brady, getting married to, uh, Congratulations to, uh, to a phenomenal him. young lady. So we're, we're very excited about that. So. Wow. That's awesome. See, look at all that positive stuff. And for me, yeah. uh, there's been so much that has been great. But on Sunday, we went out to my mom and dad's house, and today is his birthday. My dad, Terry Dryden's birthday today. And on Sunday, we went out... All the family got together at my mom and dad's house and a beautiful day on Sunday, spending time with family. It was awesome. Love that yeah. stuff. So happy birthday, Dad. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, TD. Dad. All right. So uh, let's get into last Wednesday, uh, since Fitzy suckered us into it and volunteered us one of the times <laughs> that you're on the show like a year and a half ago. Dryden Wire spo- <laughs> <Dryden Weyer> sponsors, <laughs> uh, which is, we kid about that stuff, but it's, it's great that we do. Uh, for a lot of reasons, but I wanted to talk about it a little bit. We had the Spooner Golf outing. Our team was Fitzy, myself, my dad, and my brother-in-law. Of course, you were right behind us. We're hoping you were in front of us, and then we could, you know, try to hit you. Uh, but <laughs> I don't think he had to worry about us hitting. No, <laughs> even we, if we, we tried, were all day, so we didn't have to worry. So <laughs> yeah, no, we all did terribly, but it was so much fun. So talk a little bit about where did my thousand dollars go. <laughs> I mean, well, talk exactly. a little bit about how the spoon, how it turned out. Good results. How to go? You don't want to hear my about my vacation next week. That your thousand? No, I'm just <laughs> um, a few years. Uh, we originally started this. Was actually one of our administrative interns started this uh, as a project. I'm guessing about 12 years ago, and we used it for special projects to fund around around the hospital or nursing home at that time that wouldn't normally fall into the budget. Uh, a few years back, we changed it and decided to um, spend it on scholarships for students, uh, high school students that are pursuing um, health uh, education in the healthcare field. Um, last year, we did it a little different. We actually, because of COVID and everything going on, we donated all the proceeds to Washburn County. Uh, Washburn County First, I believe it's called, yeah. local organization that really supported uh, people through the community through COVID. This year, we went back to doing it for our scholarship fund. So we've been giving scholarships for a number of years, along with our partners organization. Partners is uh, the name for what used to be referred to as a, the auxiliary. And um, this year, really important to raise a little more funds because our partners group has is, is struggled in the fundraising. Uh, the majority of their fundraising comes from the uh, gift shop here in the hospital. And with COVID, with less traffic in the hospital, them open very few oh, hours, right. a little more difficult for them to fund the scholarships. And we want to make sure we're able to do what we've done in the past. So um, all proceeds from the golf outing will go to scholarships. Uh, students apply typically in the spring. Um, through the school, we have the school application and our application. And um, I haven't looked at it in the last year or so, but before that, about 90% of the people that we have given scholarships to have pursued a profession or an education in the health field. So uh, we really feel that uh, that our scholarship committee does a good job in, in picking wow. the recipients. And we we have to help cultivate the next generation of, of healthcare workers. Yeah, Every, and isn't there a, a kind of a shortage of that? And, and yeah, shortage, before you um, answer that, isn't there a, is there something that is in this scholarship that it comes from Spooner Health scholarship? You go to it, but contingent on you got to work for us. No, we there's no strings attached that way mm-hmm. whatsoever. Um, it is purely if you're if you're going to a healthcare field. You have an application that has good school involvement, community involvement, um, work history. You know, we look at all those different things. 
and there's a narrative as to what you want to do with your education and after you uh, after you graduate um, we give it no strings attached some change professions uh, get the scholarship and don't end up going into healthcare, but we still help them achieve their goals of getting an education so mm. um, no, no strings attached that way uh, but we really want to pick those that we think are going to follow through yeah. and go into the healthcare field Fitzy, don't you i don't i thought there was something in law enforcement and sheriff's offices where it's not really a scholarship but people that want to go into like be a dispatcher or in law enforcement maybe i misremember but i thought it was whatever the class or the training is to do that that a lot of times a sheriff's office will pay for them to go and do it but i'm assuming that means they have to then work there is was that a thing or is it still a thing or you help them out or it's, something it's for patrol people it's the recruit school and that's funded by the state the 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 sheriff's department has to pay for it we get reimbursed for that if we sponsor somebody but there's some caveats to that you have to pay the person while you're going so like we don't sponsor somebody because it's just there's too much risk into it they may not work for you you can't lock the person into working for your department so there's a lot of risks mm. involved from a taxpayer based business so we don't do that although we need more people in law enforcement just like mike needs more people in nursing um but i have two comments one next uh Wednesday, Mike, we got invited. I'm on the WITC or Northwood Tech Board of Directors. And we're cutting the ribbon at our new healthcare center in Shell Lake. Oh. Um, and so I want to make sure <clears throat> that, and supposedly that's the state of the art thing. We only have, like, I was talking to John Will, our president, yesterday, and uh, there's a birthing unit. There's all of our nurses are going to get this hands on training all right in Shell Lake now. So um, this new thing is being opened up next. Uh, next uh, Wednesday in Shell Lake. So I'm very excited about that and looking forward to some of the partnerships we have there. Oh, yeah, he's gone. But real quick, Fitzy, actually, my mom just asked me last week, she was talking to Andy Ike, the Shell Lake City Administrator, and they were talking about, she said Northwood Tech and this new thing and all this fancy, I'm like, I, I don't know what you're yeah. talking about, Mom. Yeah. We'll like, I have Jen no Will clue. She said, you know, and she said, it. she asked Andy, she goes, who's my contact? Because Andy said, you should really do a story on it, but we feel like that just wouldn't be enough. So we're trying to figure out what to do. And she said, John, because he had mm -hmm. been on a show with mom before. So maybe we should just have him on. All right. We uh, can have him on. Uh, maybe next Tuesday leading into the thing on Wednesday. So anyway, yeah. you said you had two things. That was one. What? Oh, Were you inviting one, Mike or just uh, yeah. throwing it in his well, face yeah, that wanna, ha, uh, you can't come? No, no I want to invite Mike. Oh, okay. I mean, these people need to see this. Um, I, I, it's just I haven't seen I it heard myself. heard it's incredible. It's huh. I, I spoke with John Will. Oh, it was probably a year ago now, last time I spoke with him, but he was explaining to me what they were doing with the simulator, the labs and everything. And it sounds to me like it is going to be state of the art for training of healthcare professionals, right? Right That's here awesome. in Shell Lake, just south of Spooner. I think it's a great thing. Uh, I always say WITC, Northwoods Tech has done a great job in the past of um of training nurses in particular, but other healthcare workers, they got a phlebotomy program and other things. I know I've talked with John about one of the biggest needs we have is uh, lab techs um, in the industry. And it was interesting hearing from him how, if you want to start an auto mechanics program, you can do that in a matter of months. If you want to start a healthcare program because of certifications and everything, it sounds like it's a couple of year deal, but um, Northwoods Tech has been a good partner with, with the healthcare field. I would love to attend the ribbon cutting, but I am actually next week, late in the week at uh, uh, Wisconsin Hospital Association board planning retreat. I'm on their board, so I will be out of town, but I'm going to mention it to um, my chief mm -hmm. nursing officer, who's a graduate of there and a distinguished alumni, too, and see if he can go represent us. So. Convenient. Yeah, that's convenient. <laughs> convenient. <laughs> okay, my second thing was, is, is thanks for the golf outing. But, Ben, I know we joke about sponsoring, but without sponsors to our, these events, and I know Mike echoes this, but being in part of nonprofits, but, oh, there we are. Uh, yeah. uh, both of us, yeah, and our Positive Tuesday shirt, dried Moyer shirt, sign. Next year, we want a little bit bigger and a gold-plated sign. Yeah, I want a gigantic <laughs> sign next year. I'll pay for it. I just want like a like a four by eight foot, huge yeah. sign right yeah, on the sure. drive, right on the tee box, so you can't even you yeah, can't get even a nice banner, Ben. You know, a big banner. We will put it somewhere. Okay. Yeah. Um, right. I talked I talked a lot about the proceeds. I do want to thank you, Ben, uh, oh. and you, Fitzy, for shaming Ben into it last year for the first <laughs> time. But not just Dryden Wire, but all of our sponsors. But um, really, just Dryden. 
Yeah, but, but for this show, yes, yes, greatly. What's the most greatly appreciated? It really, it's it's the people we partner with in the community and do things with in the community, and some of our other vendors that are supporting our efforts to build the healthcare field in the future as well. So, thanks for doing it. It was um, an honor. It was I'm happy to do it, and we'll do it again there. next year. We'll keep doing it until we get kicked off the golf course. The only complaint, <clears> the only complaint I heard was about the group ahead of us, at least one of their guys taking yeah. enormously large divots. Oh, what was that? I, I don't know who that was. Let's move on. We have a lot to get oh, to here. Yeah, hair on his chin. Right. And it was a beautiful day. And thanks for being yeah. there. It's always great to see you yeah, guys. It was great. It, it saw was so well. many people, and it's a great networking opportunity as well. Uh, Mike, I want to ask you about two things, fit to you a couple of things, but then I want to get some election stuff. So if anyone is watching right now, we are going to kind of do some predictions or some discussions on a few races. That's going to be the governor's race. These are going to be the Republican ones, of course, because there's not really a whole lot of Democrat races that are, uh, first of all, there really isn't a whole lot, like in our area, but even the, the governor's race, well, it's just Tony Evers, Attorney General, Walt Josh Call. So there's really, the on the Republican side, there's a lot of good races. Governor's race, lieutenant governor's race, AG race are the three right now. So if anyone wants to throw in a prediction, Starting with just with the governor, who's going to win that? Michaels or Clayfish? Uh, is Adam Jarko going to beat Tony, uh, Eric Tony, and then the lieutenant governor's race? There's like eight of those people. But um, Mike, COVID, uh, Barron County Health Department put something out. We published it a week and a half ago, something like that, saying that COVID cases are on the rise. Is that what you're seeing in Washburn or in our area? And I guess the reason I just wanted to kind of quickly touch on that is we got school starting soon. This month for most schools in our area, is this something that you're concerned about? Um, concerned, yes, always concerned about it. You know, um, at what level is the question? After you said you wanted me to talk a little about COVID, I did just pop down just a few statistics I just wanted to look at. And I know you aren't big on me running through statistics. Oh, I, but... no, what? I actually I love statistics. Okay, then that's all I'll do for the next twenty. No, perfect. Um, <laughs> Right now, the state of Wisconsin, seven-day average, we're averaging about 1,600 cases a day. Um, that has been fairly consistent since May, um, where it was a lot lower before May. So about 1,600 new cases. Now, the bad part of that data is that's reported cases. So those are people that are actually tested at a testing site, a hospital, a clinic, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm reading stats that people feel that the cases may be underreported by up to three times because a people are testing at home and if you test at home that's typically not reported unless somebody calls their local health department and b a lot of people aren't testing because what's happening um, like when i had uh, covid back in may i had a bad cold and a little bit of fatigue for a couple of days i mean for my for me my covid was no worse than a bad cold the difference was how fatigued i was for a couple of days i think there's a lot of people out there running around who think they have a cold or whatever that may have covid I mean, that's what we hear. So the numbers that we see aren't exactly accurate anymore because of home testing and people just not testing okay, at all. Sure. That being said, what, what we as an industry have always looked at is hospitalizations and deaths, you know, how this is faring. And our hospitalizations, um, we were at 531 patients yesterday in the hospital with a COVID diagnosis. And they might initially be in for something else, but if, if they test positive for COVID, we have to ice, put them in isolation, use the precautions, do all that. So they're considered, I mean, a lot of people want to talk about, um, you know, while well, they're in the hospital, not for COVID. Well, if you have COVID, that's a contributing diagnosis to other things as yeah. well. They're always put in isolation and treated as such. Um, I said 531 yesterday. There were 162 patients in April. So while we're seeing a fairly reported steady number of cases, we are seeing a, a, a consistent but small increase in hospitalizations. Um, the good news is vaccinations still work. I mean, people question vaccinations. For June, um, hospitalizations per 100,000 people in the state, if they were vaccinated, there were 4.8 people per 100,000 in hospital. Oddly enough, those that are vaccine boosted were a little higher for the number of hospitalizations, but unvaccinated were 23.9. Oh, sure. So big That's increase. That, yeah, right. And, and the same with deaths. Uh, under one death per 100,000 for those that were vaccinated and boosted, 3.2 for the unvaccinated. Okay. You so, know, now I think about it, I got my second shot like November or December. I think I'm way past due. I forgot all about that. 
healthcare, the healthcare industry is still recommending vaccinate or boosters for those vaccinations. Uh, so, I should probably make a call. And none so, of I mean, turn, basically, my, my point. Turn. My point with that is we hear a lot of, well, all these people are getting COVID, even though they're vaccinated. Yes, they are. Yeah. People are still getting COVID with vaccinations. But for the most part, they're very mild cases. Yeah. We've seen a lot of staff out again. And uh, most we contact Trace, uh, anything internally from any employee who's out. We have had very few cases that we feel have come from um, the hospital, from being working here. Most stuff comes from outside in the community, sure. uh, but most of our staff that get it are not very sick, um, you know, and are back to work in a minimum amount mm -hmm. of time. So. And Fitzy, you were saying something? I said, yeah, and, and none of us that have gotten vaccinated have turned green or nothing has happened to us like they all said. That's we well, that's not true. So I saw a story uh, like a couple of weeks ago. I saw a story that there's still like uh, millions of people or like over a million people that did, couldn't smell Still, uh, there's still so there are some, but oh, anyway, fine. that's a whole other thing. Well, that's a, that's a rabbit hole. I don't want to go down right now. Um, <laughs> so, is, is there any advice other than I mean, because hey, listen, it's a personal choice. There, it's your choice to get vaccinated right. or have your kids get vaccinated or not get. That's your choice. Other than yeah. getting vaccinated, is there any any anything else that you could give in terms of advice for parents that have kids going back to school? I think some of the same things apply. You know, people aren't social distancing. Social distancing does help. Um, outdoor events, um, if, if you're going to have a gathering, whatever, being outdoors is much less conducive to the spread of COVID than indoors. I mean, that's been proven yeah. over time, too. Um, and, you know, people have to make their own choices. Yeah. To me, the good thing with school starting and everything is seeing what this latest variant has done. It's very contagious, but it's not putting people in hospitals is not causing death. I think people should at least take that into account to saying, and, you know, this current variant isn't as severe as some we've seen, but it's real, it's there. And those who are immunocompromised or have other contributing factors still can get very sick, hospitalized or die from it. Mm. I mean, it's still very real. All right, and monkeypox, is that uh, a thing that we hear about it? And for some reason, it's very controversial. Some people, some people are calling it money pox, and I haven't followed any of this, so I have no idea. Like, oh, okay, that's sarcastic, but I'm not really sure why. Fine. Monkey pox, uh, concern there at all? Not, not much in our area. There are some places that they're seeing outbreaks of monkey pox. Um, the difference to me, the biggest difference I see it in monkey pox and, say, COVID is how it's transmitted. Uh, close contact is transmission from monkeypox. Someone who has open sores, you know, touching the same things or or bedding that that uh, someone with open sores had. It's more of a contact type transmission oh. where um, where COVID is is through droplet, it's through through what you breathe, cough, things like that. So Interesting. Um, transmission should be much lower. People can pay bet closer attention and can really. Um, do things to keep themselves from getting monkeypox. I think from what I read in a much easier fashion than COVID. So. Well, either COVID or monkeypox. This is why I'm not getting any of these things because I don't, I don't like being around people yeah. like in any proximity. Yeah, you, uh, you are, you are less likely to get any of these than most people. Back. I know it's yeah. awesome. I know. Um, Fitzy, we, uh, there's a couple of press releases or articles. I just want to touch on. I don't think this first one really had anything to do with the sheriff department, but I could be wrong. Our headline was Cumberland. There's two stories there, but our latest one yesterday, Cumberland Police issued latest update on high-speed chase. It started in Polk, ended in Cumberland. They were looking for a person of interest. That person has been located, etc. I think it was a Clear Lake case, I think. It was kind of a little confused, to be perfectly honest. Like It was Cumberland, but it's Clear Lake, so I was. it's fine. But were you a part of that or anything you want to share on that story? Yeah. Yes, we were part of that. It was a high-speed oh. chase that started in Clear Lake um uh, missed the spikes in turtle lake got spiked in cumberland um the subjects then fled on foot they caught one of the girls they fought, they caught a girl and then they found some meth and then they found the person of interest in a different county the next day uh, clear lake is handling it um cumberland put the press release out because they spiked them sure. uh, there was quite a bit of meth in there a couple tens of thousand dollars worth of meth in there uh, we got the meth, and so we'll have to figure out what it all puts together here. And our what meth is, is uh, get over it, right? It's not even a thing. 
Mathis is, yeah, that's right. Some guy emailed Ben. Yeah, somebody emailed is just great. You know, last Smith week. You know, when we get like a, it's very rare that we do a story on marijuana. It's got to, you know, usually it's a bigger, you know, right. like a barn with monkeys, if you remember that story. <laughs> right. With all that marijuana. Uh, so it's not very often. And please don't, I, I'm assuming you guys don't have like a marijuana task force. Right. We don't. It, but anytime we do one of those, it's always, oh, you know, whatever. Why don't you focus on the real drugs like meth? Well, we actually got one that said, stop focusing on meth. Get over it. It's not even a thing. Focus on harder drugs like heroin. I'm like, I'm sorry. What now? So apparently meth is just, you know, it's like bell bottoms. It's just not in, in style anymore, dude. Well, with the heroin and fentanyl, I'm a little concerned if we keep killing people, uh, as we have in Barron County, that meth will be the, the new marijuana if we don't aren't careful. Because heroin, meth doesn't kill you right away. That heroin and fentanyl do kill you right away. And so, you know, we've had three deaths in the last three mm-hmm. months here in Barron County in, involving those possible drugs and a few and a few before that. So, um, yeah, I, but meth is not over. Meth is still very dangerous in our county. Meth is our number one drug, and we're not going to give it up just because some guy sent you an email. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the, the other one was, I think this was last Wednesday. I think it was the morning of our golf it was the morning of our Yeah, uh, so our headline w- was one in custody after authorities respond to incident in Barron County. Uh, I think SWAT was called. I know it's not SWAT, but that's what right. I call it. That's, uh, ERT cool. or ESR or something, right? Emergency response team, ERT. E- ERT, yeah, whatever. It's yeah. SWAT. But I don't yeah. know if they actually, I can't remember. I don't think they actually went out. What was that situation about? Uh, we had a, a subject with a knife, um, had a warrant for his arrest. We went to arrest him. He came out with a knife, swinging it around. Um, we called our SWAT team because he went back in the house. He came back out. We used a beanbag round and beanbagged him in the leg. Um, he did drop the knife and went in and took some drugs and then came out and gave himself up. So, so that's a, a roundabout story. That's what a, how I was told. Um, oh. So and right. so he's in custody, but he did have a knife, and uh, we used our less lethal option, which our squad cars have. Um, taser, beanbag guns, less lethal options. Um, but we were justified in shooting that person if he would have came at us and we were within 21 feet. Um, he met the criteria. If he would have came across the railing he was in front of and charged at officers, they wouldn't have had a choice. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I'm you know, literally, yeah, I, mean, I, I was, it would have seemed like a joke, and but I don't mean it that way. When you were telling me what that situation was, I was going to say that's a good way to get yourself shot. And right. I, and I don't no, mean I, that jokingly, right? And I don't, I don't. I'm serious about it too because I don't. I think it's it, we're you know very close, and then you know those people have to live with that. That deputy or officer mm. has to live with that. Um, you know, we had four or five people there. We would had four or five people off of you know on duty. It's no different than what happened in, in Burnett County, and Tracy's people handled it brilliantly. And yeah. and you know those things happen in law enforcement and. We don't want them to happen. We have every option for these people to stop what they're doing and and listen to the commands of law enforcement and fight it out in court. You think you're innocent, whatever the case is. But if you have a warrant, this guy, we we were called because he was destroying a house with this knife. Um, So it wasn't like we could just walk away and say, oh, well, he'll stop later. Um, That's not okay. You can't destroy things that aren't yours. You can't you have right. and you have a warrant for your arrest. We're not going to just arrest you the next day because you don't want to go to jail that day. But we'll come back on Thursday and get you. It's yeah, you know that's true. Like Mike and I, if we're going by and we see something, we can call the police. Or if there's mm-hmm. a incident or situation, we just don't want to be around it. We can just you know keep driving or walk away. You guys don't get to do that. I never no. really put it through that filter before. That no, it's we we're right. here till it's finished till it's resolved. You don't get but, to walk away. Yeah, our, our deputy did a great job with our less lethal gun and shoots a beanbag round out of a real shotgun. It's a less lethal. It's not made to shoot real bullets anymore. It's orange and and it hurts really, really, really bad. And uh, that's what I've heard. Not that I know, but <laughs> that's what I heard. And, you know, he did a great job of using our tools that we provided with him or his training and did an unbelievable job to rush the bad guy without further incident. And I think I can answer this question. It's for you, Fitzy. Just curious in a shooting okay. situation, shoot to kill or do you shoot them to wound them? I remember asking, or I found that out when I was young and dad, uh, he was the sheriff back then. Mm-hmm. Well, he's been a sheriff like pretty much my whole life. <laughs> now I think about it, almost yeah. 30 years. Uh, but there was, you know, someone who shoots 
And Dad's always criticizing and critiquing cop shows when we're watching them. Like Law and Order, anything like that. You can't do that. No, that would never happen. <laughs> and, you know, they shot him to, like in the arm to get the knife out or something. I'm like, is that a thing? Because Dad first said, you don't do that. Right. I'm like, what do you do? You shoot to kill? And he goes, you shoot to stop. Shoot to stop. Your intent is not to kill. Your intent's not to, you shoot to stop. Therefore, you shoot dead center mass. That's what right. Dad told me. Is that right? That is correct, 100%. I got one right, Mike. One to nothing yeah. on you. <laughs> I think Mike I did it. I want to comment, you know, I can't imagine what law enforcement goes through with their split second decisions they have to make. And I have the utmost respect for Fitzy, you, all law enforcement uh, situations like that. Um, this one here, they, they took the discretion of using the bean bag and avoided having to fire post potentially lethal shot. I can't imagine what an officer goes through who is put in the position of having to, to take that shot and potentially take a life. Either. But just utmost respect for those willing to do that job. But, you know, and just to criticize the media a little bit and not drive. Oh, thanks. Water. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not media, but doesn't he? We, didn't, we, we, didn't the make the front, we didn't make the front page for that story. But if we if it happens the other way, we make the front page of every story for the next four weeks. Right. And so that's the problem with this also. Oh, it's that, front page on Dryden Wire. Well, well I'm. We made the front page on Dry and Wire. You're correct, but we didn't on some of the other papers. Oh. Um, and, and that's a it's a big deal. I mean, I mean, people don't understand that, and that's why again, you don't get to tell the whole story in a, in a radio ad or a newspaper ad, and that's why I do this show because it it it's it's the front page story. It should be cops use less lethal action to take it subject into custody. I mean, that's why I sent the press release out, and that's why I said we use force on somebody, so we normally send a press release out. But, you know, that story is not going to make the front page. But if we, if it happens the other way and we make the front page, right. you know, so you've got to – I don't like that. We've got to change that narrative a little bit, and I think we're getting there. We're, we have definitely have the support in northwest Wisconsin. I'm not saying we don't have support, but we've got to commend our officers, and I appreciate that, Mike, for, for that because that's it's, it's important um, that our officers are making split second decisions yeah. and, and this one, you know, his training experience all did a great job. So anyway, outstanding. That's just a, that's no, a hundred percent agree. And I echo everything that Mike just said, and we've talked about it before. I don't understand why cops are cops and firefighters are firefighters. It's the running towards bad things. Yeah, no, not me. Fighters. Firefighters like to sleep. That's no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I love our firefighters. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade them for anything. So yeah. And see, Kirk says maybe other sources just didn't see it. Under. There you go. All right, <laughs> so let's they... switch. Uh, for the last thing I want to talk about here is election. So there's four state races that I'm wait, following. Wait, 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 wait. What? There's one first. The sheriff race in Barron County. Ann Gallagher said vote today. The sheriff race in Barron County is the, probably the most important race. And, do you, do you have, have a primary opponent? opponent? No, I don't. No. But it's still the most important race that I care about. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's five local races that I'm actually <laughs> tracking. No, so there's four. So we'll put that up. So tonight, uh, probably around 7-ish or something, we'll put up an article, and it will have a live refresh, which means every 10 seconds, you don't have to refresh your page or anything. It'll automatically do it anytime we do an update. And we'll start that or put it up around 7 and a little after 8, and we'll be tracking about 13 races. So we'll be up all night doing that. So it's just kind of one hub that you can go and, and uh, state races and area races. There's not a whole lot in our area. For races, again, primary. So we're not going to be following, you know, the 25th Senate District because Romaine is the only Republican and Kelly Weston's the only Democrat. So we're not following that because it's not a primary race. Right. Um, Tracy Finch and Burnett, Fitzy, you right. in uh, Barron. There's no Could you make no me race. the headline? Yeah. You put me in that <laughs> Uh, think, you know I what? I'll make a bet with you right now. Mike and I, because uh, uh, they always have scattering, like write-ins yeah. or maybe scrubs. Oh, yeah. Is, is he going to... I don't think he's going to get 100% of the votes. 50? <laughs> yeah. He'll get 99 points. I can't get 100% because you, if you vote for a Republican, you can't vote for a Democrat in this one. So you don't get 100% in this one. I mean, 100% you really in yours. Vote. Yeah. No, oh. Anyway, let's just uh, hold on. I see what you're saying. So uh, there's not a lot of Democrats, right. or not a lot of races statewide for Democrats that really, I think, are that exciting. So really, it kind of seems to be more on the Republican side. Uh, the I mean, uh, Tony Evers. Right. right. Josh Call. So whatever. They don't have an opponent. Nobody right. really cares about the state treasurer. I'm sorry. 
it <laughs> doesn't really excite a lot of people to look at the state treasurer or the secretary of state races so i'm kind of leaving those out we'll have those updates on our website tonight but in terms of our talking not so much the only race on the democratic side that was actually i was looking forward to seeing was the u.s senate race yeah. uh mandela barnes was obviously leading this in the polling and then his three main primary opponents all drop out in one week on a Monday, a Wednesday, and a Friday, and all endorse him. So that race is over. Right. So like, there's nothing really left. So I am looking at the Republican governor race, lieutenant governor's race, and AG race. So governor's race. Wait, go back to that one a little bit. Why sure. do you think that is? Why, why do people waste all that money, time, and effort, and then drop out the week before the primary? Is that a tactic move, or is that, in your opinion... Well, what, it's interesting what, that all also what, happened what after the you could get your re, uh, mail in ballots or your you know uh, vote before. You know what? That's a that's a question uh, we'll, we'll talk about later. <laughs> I, have, I have a comment on that though. Okay, good. Okay. I mean, that one big difference between the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. The Democratic Party does an excellent job of coalescing around the candidate with a chance to win. Yeah. You saw it in the presidential election with Biden. I mean, you look at how many people dropped out and supported Biden. Barnes was a front runner. These other people, I think, truly wanted the Senate position, yep. realized they weren't going to win it. And so then, rather than keeping an expensive primary, beating each other up in the media and that, they drop out, they support Barnes. Yep. You look what's going on on the Republican side. They're beating each other up in the media. They're spending money um, hand over fist with ads and things like that. Um, I, I got to give the Democrats credit. They have done a better job recently, both state and yeah. national, of coalescing around that candidate. I was literally telling someone that the other day that for the first time since I've been following this, since I was dry, dry and white seven years ago, the Dem oh, it was, I was, it was Patty Schachner. I was talking to her. And it's a Democrats seem more organized now than Republicans. And I've never said that before. Re Republicans are like split. There's a patriot part, and then there's like this Trump part, and then there's the, 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 the establishment part. Like, it's really bizarre yeah. that it seems like Democrats are more organized. Anyway, governor's race Republican. Yeah. But Rantham has no shot. And this is not yeah. personal. I'm not saying who I like and who I don't. I'm saying the dude's got no shot. So it's really a coin flip between Michaels and Clayfish. Uh, he gets in the race in April. But Trump's endorsement was gigantic. Trump's endorsements so far across the country, they're all doing exceptionally well, and they're winning their races. So that's a big deal. And he had all the momentum until about the debate. And after the debate, because there's no way you could watch that debate and go, wow, Michael did really well. He did terribly. It was, it was a dumpster fire. And Rebecca did exceptionally well, but that's not enough to necessarily move the needle for some people. If you were a Michaels guy, you probably still were. But she's really picked up a lot of momentum in the last few weeks. And I don't know if it's like football, like the playoffs. Whoever has momentum going into it tends to do well. It's a coin toss. If I was a betting man, I'd put it on Michaels. But I think I'm going to go Clayfish on that one. Mike, what do you, what do you think? I'm thinking Clayfish is going to eke out a close one. Um, you mentioned the debates. I watch them both. I'm kind of a political junkie. Political science was my second major at college. Um, but um, not a lot of people watch the debates. They, it's, we're a country of sound bites and headlines. I mean, people yes, But the ones that do and, are the ones that and, tell everybody else. Yeah. And, and Clayfish definitely has a better grasp of the issues than Michael's. I'm watching the debates, there's there's absolutely no doubt about right. it. I'm, I'm gonna get very political here and I'm gonna tick off some of my friends. Nice. But the Trump, the Trump effect is interesting and it's real. It because is. Because he's mobilizing the far right of the party to support his candidates. But the question I have is, can his candidates win general elections? Yeah, we you don't look know. At, you look at two Senate seats, Dr. Oz, who got it mm -hmm. in Pennsylvania and Herschel Walker in Georgia, they're both 10 points or more down in swing states yeah. right now. And we know how polls are, but 10 points is a lot. So, that, you know. And that's with his endorsement. People, you watch these people going way to the right on the Republican side during the, uh, during the campaign for primaries. Then they got to come back to the center to try to get those more moderate voters. Mm. And um, it's a little tougher, I think, for some of those supportive. All right. Uh, uh, Fitzy, do you have a, so as we have a clayfish? And again, this isn't a who do we want to win? <clears throat> this has right. nothing to do with that. It's just something fun to do. So the next yeah. week we can all come on and eat crow. 
<laughs> and tell you that oh, yeah, we were, we were so far off on all these. Uh, I, I've listened to Michael's. I he was in Rice Lake, which I do like that that candidate was in Rice Lake just recently. I listened to him. He's a huge law enforcement supporter. I did like that about him. Um, I did not watch the debate, so but I heard the the sound bites of it. I sure. agree with Mike on that. I'm probably a sound bite guy. Um, but I say Clayfish wins forty percent or forty two to forty. Oh, wow. saw, all three of us are going, boy. Yeah. Even has numbers. I'm impressed. I, I see, saw that on a thing, and I would agree. Yeah, Rathburn only gets like five percent. Yeah, so I'd be shocked if he gets more than five. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think Rathburn's going to pull from Michaels more than Clayfish. Right, be- I think Rathburn so too because of Michaels. yeah, exactly. I think a lot of people were surprised that not maybe not surprised if you understand how this works, you wouldn't be surprised, but that Trump didn't. And just ran them, but all right. So we got to keep moving on here. Lieutenant governor's race. There's a ton of people. Uh, honestly, I'm not even going to look at the Democrat side because I think there's only two. Like, can anybody, can either of you even name either Democrat in the lieutenant governor's race? Like, that's a race that nobody ever talks about on the Democratic side. So we're not even going to touch that one. But it is the lieutenant governor, and basically, like three months ago, I would have said Pat Testin. Three weeks ago, I'd say Roger Roth. I would. I, kind of thinking that that's probably safe money is Roger Roth. But, you know, I can't go against my guy, Will Martin. I just can't. I'm I sorry. Get, I wonder who you're going to pick. Uh, no, I don't think he's going to win. I don't, but I, I have to believe. I have to believe. So I'm going to Will Martin. What about you? Uh, do you have anyone, Mike? If, if you were going qualifications alone and people got a chance to really delve into this, Will Martin should win hands down. I mean, I've got a chance to meet him as well, talk with him. You've called him the real deal, I believe, and, and I agree He's with impressive. that. Um, I, it's going to be Teston or, or Roth, I'm, yeah. I, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, if I was, again, if I was betting, yep. I'd go Roth. But and it, it's name recognition. I mean, they've been yeah. in the state senate a while. They have that name. Uh, but like I said, I, I'm with Which you. Which one are you I, picking, Roth or Teston? I'm going to go with Teston. Okay. Fitzy? Uh, I don't know anything about this, but I followed it a little bit more since you've been so high on Will Martin, and, and I do like the guy too. Um, I've, win, I've, I've looked at Teston a little bit. I don't know the other guy. Teston's a huge law enforcement supporter. Uh, he got backed by a few of the law enforcement organizations here, so I'll go with him. Just, right. But I don't have a lot. To well, do. I think but again, got- I, I think Roth will win, but I'm still going to go with Martin. Okay, AG's race. Obviously, uh, uh, it was. There's a couple of factors there. Adam got in probably a couple of months later than he should have or wanted to. And I think if the election was held in two more months from now, he'd win. we would really be having that conversation. Um, but, you know, two things going for Adam. He outraises his opponent five to one uh, since January. That's big, like 500 and some thousand to 100,000. And AFP's endorsement's huge. It just is. Don't kid yourself. That's big. But then you look at his last time he ran, it was against Patty for the 10th Senate district in a pretty much red district. And he loses, you know, soundly would be the nicest way to, to say that against Patty, a Democrat in a red. Di- so that's not good. But I don't know. He's been everywhere. I, that's a coin toss for me. I don't want to go did. against Adam. I feel like this is like the raw thing or the Michaels. I feel like M- Michaels will win. But I, I'm going to say Clayfish. I think Tony's going to win, but I can't go against Adam. So I'm going to have to pick Adam. Fitzy, how about you? Uh, didn't, didn't uh, what's her name, take a shot at Adam? Oh. Yeah. Oh, didn't, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, there is Patty? another person in there. Oh, yeah. Patty Shockner? Yeah, did yeah. she take a shot at him on some kind of post oh, on Facebook? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, man, that was a little... Yeah. I thought they were friends. I mean, I thought that was a little... Uh, anyway. It's politics, man. All gloves yeah, are politics. off. Dude. I agree. I know. Yeah. Well, but it's not I'm personal. Happy. Tony's going to win. Tony's going to Yeah, I think yeah. you're probably right. Um, Mike, what I are you? Want, first, I'd say about Fitzy's comment, could you imagine if those tables were turned and a male called the female candidate a little girl? Yeah. I just throw that out there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I 100% agree very, when I saw calling a little boy. Yeah. Adam's going to win a very close one. Okay. I have that Whoa. from a Madison insider I know, so I hope oh, he's right. Very nice. Wow. He, that he's one's gonna he's be the assistant manager at Wendy's downtown. That's my that's, hey, my, that's your Madison insider. 
that's how Mike gets it. Every time I go to a drive up, I ask who they're going to vote for. <laughs> no. Uh, now, there is, we're not going to pick the winners of these because I, uh, 73rd, there is two local races for legislators. That's the 73rd and the 74th. Those are both Republican races. The 73rd would be, that's Nick Milroy's uh, soon to be former seat. And that is Angie Sapic and Scott something. I can't remember his last name. Two Republicans running there. I have no idea. I, I don't know. Angie was on last week, but I, other than that, I don't know anything about that race. The 74th, that would be Beth Myers, who said that she's not seeking re-election, mostly like, I think, like Sawyer County area. And that's Chan's Green and another, he's the only one I know. And there's a, and a John Shea, don't know who that is. I don't, I've never talked to either one of them, so I have no idea about that race. Well, so really, how many, of, how many of them were on Dryden Wire? They're going to win. They were on Dreadmire. You know, that, you know, now I think about it, like all these people I'm picking seem to be the ones that have been on Dreadmire. Clayfish has, <laughs> Will Martin has, Adam Jarko has. So, yeah, I'm just, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to pick the ones that have come on a ship. So, we'll do the same thing. Uh, Sawyer County Sheriff. We have two left. Oh. Sawyer County Sheriff in the Washburn County Sheriff's race. They are, these are the, whoever wins today is the next sheriff because there is no primary or general election opponents. So there's no Democrats running for sheriff in Sawyer or in Washburn. We have two running in Washburn and three in Sawyer. So in Sawyer County, it's Doug Morotek is the incumbent, and he is challenged by Jay Poplin and Chuck Van Eaton. I believe is how you pronounce that. Don't know uh, Chuck Van Eaton, and I don't know Jay Poplin. Doug's been on the show, <laughs> so I'm going to <laughs> Well, and honestly, like incum if you don't have any polling, I just right. kind of default to the incumbent, right? right? I mean, for a sheriff's race, that it's kind of hard to, to beat them. Right. So I'll go Doug. Uh, Mike, what do you have? No clue. No. I haven't followed it at all. <laughs> what about you, Fitzy? Is it kind of the, I'm going to default to the incumbent because. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, both incumbents are going to win those races. You think so? Yep. I, right. I mean, I don't know the Sawyer County race. I know a little bit either. about the Washburn County race, but I think both incumbents win those races. I think okay. it's hard to beat an incumbent. I don't think either incumbent has done anything wrong to say, oh, my gosh, they haven't done X, Y, or Z, or they messed a call up or did something like that. So I, I both incumbents win the sheriff races. Got it. Yeah. So uh, that is the Washburn County Sheriff's race as well. You're going with Denny. Yeah, the incumbent, Mike, who do you have, uh, Tuttle or uh, Dennis Stewart? Well, I think Tuttle has probably volunteered and met dang near every resident in Washburn County during his campaign. Mm -hmm. I think he's done a great job that way, but I agree with Fitzy. I think, you know, the incumbent, hard to beat in a race like that. Um, yeah. yeah I, and some races I, just aren't winnable. And that's right. where we just don't know, right? Like, Tuttle could be up 15 points right now. And he could be right. down 15 points. Like, we just yeah. don't know. Exactly. So it's not like a coin flip with, like with Michaels and Clayfish. This could be a blowout. Either way, though. Like, yeah. there's just yeah. no way to really know. And, again, some races just aren't winnable. Yeah. And it could just be that. But if anyone could win, Warren has done it exactly how you're supposed yeah. to do it. Between yeah. advertising, between going to every single... Uh, like, no kidding. Mike, you're right. That dude has been everywhere for nine months nonstop. If he's not working, he's out campaigning. He's put in the work. He's done everything that he is, should do. But it doesn't necessarily mean you – that doesn't necessarily mean you win. Exactly. It, it could just be an unwinnable race, which is right. fine. And that's how it goes. So I agree with both of you. The incumbents – Dennis will win. That's what I believe. But Tuttle's been on a show, so I'll go Tuttle. <laughs> 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 I'm picking everyone that's been on our show. That's my that's my new uh, strategy. But, but you do realize, yeah. Fitzy, if if uh, Tuttle does win next week, Ben will be saying, you know, I said Tuttle could <laughs> win because he's done everything right. He's hedging his bet so that he can't be wrong no matter right. what yeah. happens. Yeah. Good politician. Uh, Good politician. I'm glad I won't be here next week to have to put up with it. I'll listen to it later. So yeah. <laughs> But uh, but Tuttle has outworked. He's outworked some of these state of state yeah, people it's running ridiculous. across the state, you know. And and Adams outworked. And uh, but Eric Tony's done a good job from the AG's race. I mean, but Adams worked hard, man. That's a lot of traveling across yeah. the state of Wisconsin. I'm sure he's happy it's over. 
Um, I, I'm sure he ho hopes he can continue to do it, but you know what? There's going to be some losers, but like I think Romain said this morning, whoever wins, we've got to start getting back on track here and not this infighting. Yeah, and that is what. So, kind of bringing that you know, the positive part here. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people look at politics as it's a negative. Well, understand what well, one. Sometimes you're right. right, but there's a lot of countries that don't even have the option to elect the people that represent them. We're very fortunate. So this should be a great day for just right. that being able to do it. And then when after tonight and your guy wins and guy being, you know, guy or girl, but, you know, your guy wins. Be humble. Kind of like Mike would say, no, I'm not going to throw it in anyone's face. I'm not going to get it. I don't think any of these right. But, uh, you know, be humble about it. And also it's not worth losing friendships over. And if your guy doesn't win, your life's still going to go on tomorrow. It's going to be fine. It's not, I mean, it's a big deal, but, you know, it's, it's not worth hating other people over. Their neighbors, if they supported somebody else, don't throw it in their face if your guy wins. And if your guy loses, you know, it's not the end of the world. It really isn't. That's a great point. Politics has become so divisive, and it shouldn't be. We, I believe we still live in the greatest country in the world. You know, we have the opportunity to vote for our representation. Um, our candidates don't always win, but the people speak. So That's right. um, I was number six in Evergreen Township this morning to vote. Uh, I made sure I got out there early with work on that to vote. Um, encourage everyone to vote. Take, take part in our democracy. We have, we have, we have the type of system that others would die for or have died for. So. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, last words, uh, Fitzy? Uh, I agree. Go vote. Vote for Dave Wilson. I don't know. He's not running for nothing, is he? Maybe he is. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to get his name in there. Yeah, we got uh, Vote the for your favorite sheriff uh, in Barron County. And I and honestly, it's been an honor and a privilege to one be on the show and 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 be, have the job I have. I mean, I love it. I mean, I love it. I'm honored to be on the ballot. Um, I'm honored for your vote, and it it really means a lot to me to check my name today. Um, you know, I. And my daughter gets to vote for me today for the first time ever. It's, oh, that's got to I mean, be cool. It, I, mean, I mean, it is cool. It is, it's really special, and um, it's cool. And, you know, I, I just – maybe she won't vote for me. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, it's the first time she's voting with your name on the ballot. Right. But <laughs> – Yeah, maybe she's not. Gonna, but, you know, I, it's, I love my job. I love what I do. Um, and it's, it's about the why and not the what, and, um, it's about mm. why we do what we do, all three of us. Uh, it's about the why it's not about what, but it's, it's about who stands behind us and the great teams that we all have. So, yeah. uh, thank you. Awesome. Mike, thanks so much for coming on. Yeah. I just, uh, one last comment. Mm. Um, you know, we joke Ben about you supporting those who've come on your show. No. <laughs> I find your mm. political, I don't, don't even want to call them interviews because, you're, you're not the hard hitting. You let them yeah. discuss what they want to discuss. I find those just so fascinating and interesting. And I love the fact that you offer it to any candidate. You're not out recruiting, but anyone who wants to come on, Democrat, Republican mm -hmm. can do it. And, and I find that in that 45 minutes you have a candidate on, that it's just so interesting to really find out what they're about. And I appreciate the fact that you're doing that. I think you're helping to inform voters and, and giving the air to whoever wants it. So thank you for that. Wow. I love it. No kid, Mike. Thank wow. you. That, that, was I, nice I, that is like, a, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go back. I'm going to edit this one little part out, what, what you just said right there. And I'm going to, I'm going to put that on. Uh, you know what? I think I'll put it on. We'll replace. That's the thing that we used for you before. And I'm just going to have that ready to go. I actually got a compliment from Mike Schaefer. It's a red letter day. Uh, oh, Dave Wilson's go. watching. He oh, sent boy. me a text. Well, he wants sure. to talk to me about something I'm not talking to. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> For Barron County Sheriff Chris Fitzgerald, I'm Ben Dredd, and you've been watching Positive Tuesday with Ben and Fitzy, presented by Professional Exteriors and Interiors. With nearly 20 years of experience, this locally owned and operated business provides quality work both on the inside and on the outside of your home or business. Give Brian a call today, 715-520-2271. Special thank you to our guest today, friend of the show, Spooner Health CEO, Mike Schaefer, for being on. Thank you for those sharing in the comments and the positive words because, as we all know, little things make a big difference. So until next week, thank you for watching and have a blessed day.